and welcome to the High Frequency Trading System Design Architecture Series. My name is Push, and I'm thrilled to have you join me on this journey into the fascinating world of HFTs. So till now, we have already covered part one and part two of the series, and this is the final or the third part in the series. In case if you haven't watched the earlier parts, I recommend you to go and watch that. Uh, for those who do not know, in the series, we are trying to uh, go over to the blog post from Ariel Salahian, who is a great known person when it comes to electronic trading and um, he has been managing a lot of these funds or trading funds for quite a while and he's a widely known figure in the industry. So till now, we were discussing the different components that we have in the HFT design system in which the first component that we had a look over was a data feed handler, which handles the data feeds as obviously understood by its name. The second, once we have the data, once we have passed those data using the fast H out and the different binary protocols, then we move to the second component that we had, that is the limit order book. And where we try to implement the limit order book using the simple arrays. Uh, bits and ask and we allocated pre-allocated as much memory as we could have the third component that we looked over was the order management system the fourth component was the strategy the brain of the system and we understood that there could be thousands millions of infinite different strategies and it depends on the use case the asset class and the things that you are working on the Next segment, the next component that we looked at was the software architecture or the design patterns that we are using. And in that particularly, we tried to cover through the first pattern that is observer design pattern, the second signal and slots pattern, and the third, the ring buffer pattern. And we also have a look over the Almex with its disruptor pattern. So here in the series, now we are going to continue from that particular point of view. So the pattern that we last discussed was this ring buffer pattern or the Almex with its disruptor. And now for having ultra low latency, uh, we'll be using this busy weight or the spinning pattern. And generally when you consider design patterns, those are patterns for designing applications. However, in this case, we would be going ahead with the busy weight or the spinning pattern. And generally it's not categorized as a pattern. However, it is considered as an anti-pattern and usually is not recommended from software architecture pers design perspective. However, when we are designing low latency systems, we don't care how night it is, as long and or if it follows the good practices, as long as it's giving us the latency. Because until now, what we have been optimizing at each and every level is the latency. And in case if we can have advantage over latency, a lot of the strategies that a lot of the arbitrage that are out there, we can take advantages of those arbitrage. And in this generally, the process, so the processes that we have will run into the tight, tight loops waiting for something and then that loop will consume the fully or the 100% of the CPU cycles. So for example, in our case, we are going to be reading the market data from a limit order book module. And if it, meet certain strategies criteria we will send specific orders and to execute that trade this is by far the fastest way to get the data available from other modules that we have and uh, but not only that uh, having this kind of processes we might miss on some cache min misses and cpus context switching so for example if you try to lower to the code that we have it's just similar to it's just a very simple code and if you wish you can also go on the github link mentioned in this article to have a look over and implementing those things on your own so mostly if we try to understand from it a higher level perspective they have made the uses of threads and locking and unlocking in the data
and uh, not everything here is as good as it seems bc weight processes are very hard to design and too dangerous for overall performance since it could take entire cp power bringing down the entire system's performance so the key part of using the user busy weights in our systems is to set a thread if needed to a specific cpu goal that means we will say to our system to run this busy weight process in only one cpu core and we will be able to pin as many processes as cpu cores we have because if we are not going to do this affinity or the pinning we are going to use the entire cpu power and one of the things is since we are optimizing for the low latency then uh, memory the threading model the threading model the input output model and memory management should be designed to collaborate with each other to achieve the best overall performance and generally this goes against the oop concept of loose coupling however if you try to remember we are optimizing for latency low latency these con these things goes against the standard or the best practice of architecture design patterns but we will optimize latency same and then we might need to take care of some synchronization methods logs wherever it is needed and uh, it is like if you would have seen earlier that uh, ariel's approach is to design the data structures in a way that uh, we will have low amount of synchronization and this was kind of the most sensitive part of our system with most sensitive part of the system with respect to the latency that we have and if we decide uh, design this thing in a right manner this technique will give us the best latency now comes the one more component that is the positions and the risk management because if you do not manage the risk and all that then you could go on a lot of different side tracks of ways or completely wipe out sometimes and uh, generally a lot of sense by strategy should be consolidated positions so we can keep track of our open close orders and most important how our exposure to the market is generally it's recommended that uh, our strategy should keep a flat exposure but in certain strategies like market making we may ha have to allow having control exposure if you are holding inventory obviously and they have some popular risk management rules out of which a uh, couple of ones are having a position limit single order limit money control illegal price detection self trading detection and the order cancellation rate and these are the edge cases or the cases that we need to consider while we are designing our system in case if we do not have these systems into place a lot of times we can go left or right very wrong so for example uh, in this particular component we can we want to analyze different allocations on strategies or trade and uh, some of the strategies might lead you to lower volatility in your returns and uh, and could be a great insurance in case if things goes wrong and finally the the final component that we have is a monitoring system and we need to have this monitoring system because we are building a fully automated system that must be able to open and close positions within within fraction of seconds or within milliseconds and so that uh, for this we have to ensure proper monitoring systems to control the overall operation uh so for example if we as a human realize that some strategy is not doing what it should or if any venue is not providing prices as it should then we must stop the system and so that we do not have any recoverable losses so but how many minutes does it take for a person to shut down the system five minutes if he is fast maybe one minute it's like slow that that is not possible but by that time we might have closed 
more than thousands of wrong orders so so we need particularly need to put these monitoring systems into place and a couple of places we can check on is overall pnl for let's say there is a flash crash or system our system should be able to close all po positions and shut it down itself uh, if there is a issue in connectivity between venues make sure that it doesn't happen and we are connected with all the venues that we have and activating reconnection systems in place when it's when the connection is lost and the third thing is monitoring latencies let's say some switch in any case start to fail and you start to receive data with delays you will never realize that until you start to analyze some logs and uh, the destruction have been done till now so in that case we need to monitor latencies between venues to assure data delivery and alert us in case of any issues so this was the series we have till now the three part series by ariel silahian thank i thank him very much for sharing this uh, wonderful wonderful series of blogs and if we try to recollect through how we are designing the architecture of the hft systems for having as low latency as possible or designing these low latency systems the different architectures that we have a look over through the first one data feed handler for handling data feeds the second thing the limit order books for creating this limit order uh, for creating the order book uh, the third that we discussed was the order management system the fourth strategies the brain of our system fifth is the software design architecture patterns observer signal and slots ring buffer almex with disruptor and finally busy wait or spinning generally that's an anti pattern then we also have this uh, component of position and risk management so that to keep things under constraint conditions so that uh, things doesn't go left or right and finally the thing overseeing this everything the monitoring systems having these monitoring systems in place so that uh, we have an idea and we have a control about how things are happening there are no connectivity issues uh, there is no issue with latency or some component of the system not working or being restarted so everyone who's here till now at this point i thank you very much for sticking together till the end in case if you have any doubts or any questions please let me know in comments and i hope you really liked and understood some of the um these architecture practices for designing the high frequency trading systems and if you really like this don't forget to like share and subscribe and see you on in another series thank you keep watching